hose clamp is applied. And at a signal from the pumper, the hydrant man opens the hydrant and charges the line. Then he runs to back up the nozzle man. The other type of hose laying operation is the reverse lay, used when the pumper reaches the fire before it can get to the hydrant. In this scene, the smoke pots indicate the location of the fire. Sufficient hose is pulled off to reach the fire, and the pumper moves on, laying a line to the water supply. First lay with line charged and nozzle men ready to advance on the fire. Your department will use variations of the straight lay and the reverse lay, such as this hookup involving the use of two pieces of apparatus. The first engine drops a line to snag the hydrant and then moves onto the fire, laying the line as it goes. The second engine makes the hookup to the hydrant and charges the two and a half inch line. The operations of laying hose and getting water to a fire as quickly as possible and in adequate volumes require skill and timing. Each of the many jobs involved has to be practiced over and over until you learn to do them instinctively. Remember that many of these operations, such as making and breaking hose connections and attaching nozzles, may have to be carried on in the dark, in snow or mud, and without loss of time. Practice with charged lines is necessary to help you get the feel of your equipment. In handling nozzles, be sure to open and close them slowly. Rapid shutoff of the nozzle may damage hose or the pump and even endanger your fellow firemen if more than one line is operating from the same pump. These are four of the nozzles carried by one pumper and the men are getting practice in their use. Continuous practice in hydrant work and laying hose is also necessary for quick hookups and efficient pumper operation. Time lost in getting your pumper into operation can never be made up later. Good coordination of pumper controls is necessary so that adequate but not excessive pressures can be furnished quickly to the men at the nozzle. In many departments, every volunteer must learn how to use the two- and three-way radio, to speak clearly, to report facts accurately, to know when to call for aid or report that your apparatus is ready for service. The loudspeaker on your apparatus should be turned up whenever you leave it or your pump is operating. This is a course in public relations. Even the axe and pike pole become important when you consider that your neighbors are sensitive to your methods of forcible entry. Instead of trying to chop your way in, try the lock first, the chief points out. Never use the axe unless you have to. If the door is locked, break the glass instead of trying to smash the lock. The glass is easier to replace. Remove glass splinters before putting your hand inside. In all cases, try to avoid injury. If you're not carrying an axe, use your helmet. Gloves are indicated for this operation. Break only one pane nearest the lock. Then open the window. Here's another hose layout you'd better learn. It looks easy, 
but it's just as important as any other operation for the efficiency of your department. Every job, no matter how menial, has its place in fitting you for those times when you must prove your right to be called a fireman. Even as you scrub and roll hose, you are preparing yourself for the job that lies ahead. And the real fireman is the one who puts in his share of time at the station, helping get the equipment ready for an alarm that may come all too soon. He helps load dry hose. He helps recharge extinguishers that have been used. Or helps dry and fold the salvage covers. Because he never knows whether the next alarm will come in the next five hours or the next five seconds. But when it comes, you've got to be ready to roll. Rain or sleet, day or night, you've got to get there fast. But get there all in one piece. The test of your training always has the makings of tragedy. Somebody's home, a job, or a life may be at stake. And it's up to you to prove you've trained well. In this sequence, we will see how fast a modern fire department can lick a roaring fire that involves a whole house. his job and within seconds after arrival the men are ready to attack the fire the line is advanced to the window and water spray applied the puffs of steam that result snuff the fire out in a few seconds was a roaring inferno is now only a slightly damaged house, still structurally intact. This is the result of the skill, the knowledge, and the teamwork that should be the goals of every fireman.